Hello and welcome. In this video, we'll take a look at how to compute the free cash flows for a company. Now, a free cash flow is basically the cash that is generated by the business of the company. If we ignore the financing of the company, that is, if we ignore any interest related um, uh, you know, matters, we, if we assume that the company never borrowed any money, or if we ignore the, how exactly the company was financed. So assume this fictional company that has a profit after tax of $100. Now the free cash flow would basically take into account any additions or subtractions to this profit after tax. So for example, depreciation. Depreciation is a non-cash expense. That means basically depreciation is a certain amount calculated as a percentage of the fixed assets of a company, such as its plant and equipment and manufacturing facilities and so on that reflects the use of that equipment in that year. So it's usually not actually money out of the pocket for the company. It just reflects that the economic useful life of the factories and the plant and machinery have decreased in that year by a certain amount. And the accountants add a certain calculated amount based on regulations and so on to the depreciation. And this is deducted from the total revenues uh, to arrive at the profit, but it's not really money that's going out of the pocket for the company. So what we do is we add back depreciation to profit after tax. Okay, next what we do is um, look at the increase in current assets. To take an example from Yahoo Finance, uh, if you look at General Motors, current assets are things like cash and cash equivalents, short term investments, net receivables, inventory and so on. Current assets are basically any assets of the company that can be sold in the market at short notice if the company wants to raise cash. So for example, cash itself is a current asset because it is cash. And then cash equivalents are investments in money market mutual funds or other short term investments like investments in stocks and bonds that can be quickly sold off and money can be raised if necessary. Um, receivables are an example of current assets as well. Receivables are nothing but money that is owed to the company by its customers who have not yet paid for it. So for example, you know, General Motors sells a few cars to its dealers and those dealers say, okay, I'll pay you in say 30 days or 60 days or 90 days. So all those amounts that are due to General Motors but not yet have been paid are included in receivables. And inventory is nothing but the raw materials, the finished goods and other you know, intermediate pro processed materials that are lying about in General Motors factories uh, that are waiting to be transformed into finished goods and sold off to the customers. All that is inventory. So theoretically, that too can be sold in the market. So for example, if General Motors has lots of steel lying in its inventory, it can be sold in the open market for cash. So that's also an example of current assets. Um, so if you look at all these current assets, you have a figure for total current assets. Now, compare this to the total current assets in the previous year and there has been an increase in total current assets. So it looks like from this, it looks like the biggest increase probably happened in uh, net receivables. It was 23 billion, it's not 33 billion. So it looks like more and more customers of General Motors are uh, delaying their payment for some reason. Or it may be that General Motors has more customers and uh, they're all just normally delaying their payments according to the normal terms of payment. But because there are more customers, it shows up as a bigger receivable. So it could be anything. Um, but what it does show is that General Motors is owed more money by its customers. So that means that an increase in receivables uh, or increase in current assets in general will mean there is a decrease in free cash flow for the company. So what we do here is we have to subtract any increase in current assets. So what we do here is we say, okay, B3 minus any increase in current assets. Now, current liabilities are the mirror image of current assets. Current liabilities are things like, again, coming back to the General Motors example, things like um, accounts payable, which is like the mirror image of accounts receivable. Accounts payable is any money that is owed by General Motors to its vendors and suppliers that it has not yet paid. And uh, any short term debt, that is money that was borrowed from bank that General Motors said it would return in the next 
uh, one month to six months to a year or any current portion of long term debt. So any money that was borrowed by General Motors, say 10 years ago, but that is falling due in this year. All those are current liabilities and there could be some other current liabilities as well. Now, if current liabilities increase and you can see there's a, a huge increase in the other current liabilities, we don't know what it is. If there is an increase in current liabilities, what it means is that General Motors is holding on to more cash from its business than it did in the past. So any increase in current liabilities will result in an increase in your free cash flow. So what we do is we add up any increase in current liabilities for that reason. Capital expenditure refers to any investments in plant and machinery that were undertaken in the current year by the company. And these are usually, it's very obvious that these are uh, a use of cash. So what you would do is you would subtract any capital expenditures or CapEx. So you would do a minus um, 37 over here and to arrive at a free cash flow of $98. And then we come to the most important one of them all, interest payments. So imagine that this company, fictitious company here, borrowed some money for its operations and it had to pay an interest of $27. If you're going to pretend that financing was never an issue, if you want to compute the cash flow of the business while ignoring financing, then you should basically just add back any interest payments because those interest payments would not have been made if there was no borrowing done by the company right so you add it back but then there's an issue we also have a tax rate of 15 percent that results in a tax shield or interest tax shield and that interest tax shield is nothing but this 15 percent times the interest payment so basically because the company paid a 27 dollar interest payment the company paid four dollar oh five of less of tax than it would have otherwise paid because if you think about it this 27 dollars was deducted from the company's taxable income and only the remaining was taxed so basically the company saved four dollars oh five cents on income taxes because of its interest payments so if we are going to pretend that there is no interest payment we also have to pretend that the company received never received this interest tax shield as part of its business so we need to actually then subtract the interest tax shield as well to arrive at a free cash flow of $120.95. Now, the another way to look at this is to, I'm just going to copy this formula here. And uh, well, before that, I just want to compute the after tax interest payment. So what we can do is we can basically compute uh, 27 times one minus 15%. That's another way of arriving at the same formula. So $22.95, which is the after tax interest payments, which is nothing but this minus this. So instead of saying B7 minus B9, we can just say uh, plus B10. So plus B10, which would give us the same amount. Um, in fact, I can just copy this here and put this here just to demonstrate that we'll get the exact same figures uh, B7 minus B10. So whether you do it one way or another, you'll get the exact same figure. All we're saying here is that we want to compute the free cash flow of a business. That is the cash flow generated by the business, ignoring any financing issues. So assuming, so for example, that the entire operations of the company the company was invested only by stockholders and it, it never borrowed any money. If we assume that, then this is how much cash the business would generate. And this is actually a, a popular way of estimating the health of the business. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching.